Hi everybody, Sharon from Vivid Days and today's video is back to basic, right back to beginners and back to one of my original ocean pieces that I created but I've done it slightly bigger. So this video is for people who are new to resin or are just supporters and enjoy seeing my process. We are going to show you how to create an ocean piece like this so i just love the depth in this piece you can see a little bit of glitter the movement in those waves as they're just kissing a little bit of that shoreline there the cheeky little um starfish in there where is the oh cheeky little starfish there a couple of shells and some nice movement but i just love 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 the um the depth in there so look at that sparkle try not to get the reflection in there so Thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. Remember to come back and visit me, but comments are always welcome. And I hope you enjoy this step-by-step -step tutorial. As always, if you've got any questions, let me know. If you've got any requests, let me know. But I'm back, I'm creating, and I am enjoying connecting with the ocean. And I love this little bit of a going back to some of my original pieces and seeing where I can take them. But this is gonna be proudly on my wall and I'm just gonna hear that ocean lapping. Anyway, see you on the next video. I hope you enjoy, much love and keep safe. Bye bye. So you should be able to see Zeus in the background, but this is Thor, our new fur baby. And he is gonna be amazing company for our Zeus there. But he is 10 weeks old and he is a handful, but he is absolutely Adorable, look at that, eh? Oh, bit my nose. <laughs> I'll give you updates on how Thor goes. Come back and see. So for people who don't know me, I'm Sharon uh, from Vivid Days and I am going to take you through this tutorial. Now I upcycle some frames that you can get from um, local places. This was from the range. It basically had some words on there like family is important, so positive vibes. I've painted the base of this with acrylics. I've chosen to use a sand colour for this piece because I wanted the darker undertones. If I'd have put light there, there would have been brighter pigments coming through. I've made sure my board is level and I have taped the underside and the top of my board. The reason the underside is the MDF can have gaps and it's to stop leakage. And the top is because I'm a messy worker and it's to protect the areas. So I'm using a resin which is a um, resin and hard one-to-one no, -one part and it's a medium viscosity. I've added in there some super sparkle white from the Colour Cottage. Uh, I added that after I'd mixed my resin for three minutes and a hot tip, clean as you go with your resin. You just need one paper towel, wipe it all off, make sure it's good and dry and then you can just spray a little bit of alcohol and wipe it again. Now I am going to be adding clear just to this corner. The reason being I'm going to add some sand in there and it's sand that you can get from crafts or hobby places. Uh, you can choose to add that or not or be creative with what you put in there. I'm basically going to protect a section of the board that I want to keep as though that's the bit where the ocean meets the sand. Here's my sand. I keep it in a little container to keep it dust free. You can either, uh, when, when applying sand, you can either add it directly to the board then put resin on top or you can put the resin down and add the sand on top of it and it will slowly absorb in or you can mix your resin into your uh, silicone cups and um, pour it out then and it'll be more of a thicker consistency um, I don't want to do that I just like doing this way I don't know why it's just my preference but you do whichever way works for you having said that I do know why when I add my resin first and then apply the resin, it floats away into the pigments. So I'm just trying to control it. Anyway, just so you know, with this board, I mix up about 300 mils and this one can take three layers. If you're unsure what to use, get your measurements and then you can do a resin calculator. There's one um, on the App Store or you can go onto any website and just put in resin calculator, put in your measurements and it'll tell you approximately the amount of resin you will need. It can differ depending on the viscosity which you use. Mine's medium uh, and you can go thinner layers. For me, because I'm going to be working on the ocean and movements, I want to create a little bit of that churning. So 
yeah, that's what we're doing now. Now I am adding acrylic to my resin and I'm adding um, less than 10% of resin versus acrylics. And I'm going to start with my darker colours and work my way lighter. I'm going to go great, put my teeth in, gradiate it a little bit so that you've got that sense of different depths within that ocean and you're going to blend it in anyway. But the base layer is what's going to help you get that depth if you want it to look deep in areas. Now I go very slowly across the edges because I'm trying not to get my resin up the sides. Um, um, get your little popsicle stick and scrape around. It's amazing what resin will come out of that cup. Once I've done the, uh, um, I said titanium, all right? once I do the ultramarine blue is what I'm trying to say, I will then use the same cup so that I'm helping reduce my waste and I will slowly get the colours lighter. The reason I like to do that is mainly environmental, secondly cost, but also those pigments and tones will come through. Uh, and it helps with that blending and that continuation of that colours. And you can see in between each time I mix in, I make sure it's thoroughly mixed in. I'm not, not showing you it fully uh, all being mixed because I want to save you some time. But I mix it through until all the clear resin has um, disappeared and all the pigments is running throughout that cup. So I scrape around the edges every so often and then just have a little look, make sure that everything is evenly coloured through. Once it's good... I um, start applying it. Because this is uh, acrylics, resin can respond quite dramatic to certain acrylics if they are a true water base or they've got a higher water within that pigment and it can cause it to dramatically heat up or go marshmallowy. So I only apply my acrylic to the resin as I'm going to use it and apply it straight to the board and that removes the risk of there being any reaction or waste of resin and nobody wants to wait wet ugh, waste resin it's very expensive now at this stage I noticed that my sand had clumped in areas but I wasn't too concerned because it adds a little bit of character to it I can always apply some more and on my next layer I can do it and the bottom of the ocean isn't necessarily flat is it you get all those ripples in there so sometimes you have to work with your resin work with what it's trying to to do and see the benefits in it and and go with it about this point also i noticed that the pigments were looking quite dark and that's because i'd used as i mentioned before a sandy color underneath my water uh, if i'd have used white it would have been because they're quite transparent these pigments i'm using it would have looked a lot lighter now i'm glad i actually did go this route for this piece because i lighten it up with each layer but it is something to take into consideration and the colours I'm using don't have to be the colours you use. Use whatever you've got in your um, artist's cupboard. Um, I'm only showing you what colours I'm using just for reference, just in case you want to know. But be creative. Go with whatever colours speak to your heart or whatever you've got uh, to use over. And you can see it's about the same amount of pigment that I put in per cup. And I'm slowly gradiating those pigments. Now, I do use on the first layer a the Peebo blue, green, green, blue, and um, turquoise. I had to find that word in my brain there. And when you're looking at it this way, you can't see any obvious color difference. But as it mentions within it, if it's a blue, green, or green, blue, you're going to get more tinges of green coming through, more tinges of blue coming through. But they are very transparent. Now, these can go quite milky looking if you apply a little bit of white to it. So you can use that for more of the ocean that's churning near the shoreline. Uh, but be adventurous with it. Now, because resin is self-leveling, I'm just trying to get it to connect with um, the other parts of the resin. By doing that little squiggly move, the resin will leak into it and it'll connect with the other resin and it'll help it self-level. And I'm just trying to force that to happen. You can see that I slowly go around the edge, pushing it towards the edge or just touching around it. And that's to make sure that there's going to be no big air bubbles on that edge. Air bubbles are a little bit more forgiving when you've got a side like I've got on this because I'm going to build my resin up. But I'm just applying that technique as I go. Once I do finish this first layer, you'll see that I'll clean my cup up more or less straight away and all the tools that I'm using. That way I use one paper towel, clean it around, spray a bit of alcohol on it 
and they're good to be reused again so reducing that imprint on the environment one more thing for me to share with you if you've watched my channel before or you've watched other resin artists watch your health and put safety first so use those gloves uh double glove probably is the best thing to do i know it costs a lot more but when you get sticky with resin if you remove a glove it's very hard to get gloves back on and you can start to transfer stickiness to your hand and you want to avoid that so a hot tip i would say is make sure you're wearing a respirator work in a well ventilated area if you've got any ventilation pop it on and um, think about protecting your eyes and think about protecting your hands because I've been working with resin for nearly four years and you can build up an intolerance to it and you may respond differently to different bands and you may dis respond differently to just working with resin and I've known people that's not been able to work with it for very long I've known people that's worked with it for years uh, but I have developed a reaction to it over time so don't cut corners put your safety first uh, but have fun it is still a beautiful substrate to use now what you can see me doing is I'm getting very into blending my resin so I'll put my different colors in and then you'll see me encouraging it to blend with the other pigments around it so you get some nice unique um, colors but also you get some nice blending and I'm hoping that that's going to add to that illusion of it not just being flat and the same level under that ocean and I am thinking about where I'm going to place my waves and that's where I've put the dark in the runs off free because when I apply my lighter color or my white for the foam I'm hoping that if it seeps over some of that dark line that I've put in there and it leaves a little gap it's going to give that illusion of shadow that's the thought anyway and i'm slowly blending some of that light uh, turquoise into the clear resin because i want it to look like this particular part of where the oceans meet in the sand it, it is underwater and so i want a little bit of that tones coming through so i'm going to take a quick sup of tea and i'll come back and talk through but you can't see it at the minute but there is some beautiful shimmers coming through from that super sparkle white and I apologise for the shine of the light coming onto my um, resin. It's very hard for me to be able to capture the piece so you can see it and see where I'm working and not have any lights that's reflecting in there. But I'm Sharon, I'm digressing. Let me just take a breather. The magic of time and recording and editing. I've managed to have a nice cup of tea and my throat is feeling nice and rested. Um, a couple of things I'd like to take the time, which is thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. That's your way of thanking me, the artist, and it's a way of helping my channel grow and me keep putting content out there. For people that have been um, previous members of mine, I am going to be starting my membership up. So have a little look at my homepage if it's something you're interested in. There will be some unique things for members only. And also remember, I have a Facebook group. So if you do want to showcase your art with other creatives, regardless of what type of art or creativity you have, uh, pop over and have a little look. It's such an encouraging group of people. And last but not least, um, if you've got any requests, if you want to purchase any of my work, I do have an Etsy store or you can contact me privately. I'm not going to be doing any commissions for this year uh, because my time is very stretched at the moment. And to be able to find some relaxation for myself, focus on the art I want to do and meet all my commitments in my personal life to do commissions, it's probably just going to add a little bit of stress for me this year. So if you are wanting any of my work, keep checking out the Etsy or if you've got any recommendations of what you want to see on my channel, let me know and I will try and create something. And who knows, it might be something that you want to purchase. Anyway, let's get back on with the project. You saw me have my heat gun and I put it on 360 on a slow fan to start with. And I move left to right to make sure it covers all the area fairly quickly. You saw it in real time and then I'll go back over it again. The reason being I'm wanting to heat up that resin encourage it to self-level, remove any obvious air bubbles. I went in then and applied some more sand to try and cover up some of those um, big gaps that was there to make it look more ripply. And I'm now doing my casting craft. Now, I only add this when I feel that the resins had a chance to level, when I've done all of the things before. And I go in a little bit of a loose motion. I want to create a few little gaps between each pieces because for me, that helps 
give the illusion of shadows in that foam and that movement. It's a personal preference. A lot of people do their waves in a totally different way. Find a style that you enjoy and don't try necessarily make it replicate anybody else's. Put your own spin on it. Let your art speak to you. Anyway, in this area where I want it to be predominantly where the oceans meet in the sand, so only a little bit of water, I'm adding a tiny thin layer of this casting craft to let it spread a little bit, to make it look like there's a tiny little ripple there or you're getting some of that little foam uh, clinging to the rocks and everything like that. Um, my Zeus is sat next to me and he's just twitching. I'm just wondering what's happening to him. I tend to do my waves in rotations of three. It doesn't have to be that way for you. Go with whatever feels right. And I'm trying to place my foam just above where I put that dark line, just as I mentioned before, to add to that illusion of that wave starting to roll. Now, some people might say perspectives all off and everything like that. Who says that it has to be, um, you know, correct in proportions? It's your art, your magical world. You make it so that you're happy with it. For me, I wanted to capture a slice of ocean. Now, I've been quite restrained when I added my starfish and I added those shells. I didn't want too many uh, on that beach area. Just a little bit of a suggestion, but you can go as free as you want to with that. Now, don't aim for per perfection with this layer. This layer is all about creating a bit of depth, an understanding of where your composition will be and where you want your waves. Now, some people may just want to do one layer of resin because resin is expensive and you might love the result that you've done and that's okay. For me, I like to do two to three layers of um, oceans with resin or layers just to help me see the depth and the movement. Now this wave I'm I'm putting in here, I end up not liking it and I edit it out on the next layer, but that's that'll come very shortly. I'm trying to concentrate on the thicker wave being the one that's meeting the shoreline. And um, as always, because it's fluid art, the minute you start heating it up, it does move and you can suddenly lose a lot of the space or the area that you've been trying to protect, but that's okay. As I've said before, just work with the resin. Now, I am now concentrating on where I've put the white foam and it's so important that your gun doesn't touch the resin, that you constantly keep moving it. And for me, I like to do my um, heat gun in a forward backwards motion. That's not for everybody. That's just the way I like to create my waves. So experiment, have fun. I'm doing this in real time for you to get an idea of how quickly I move. And um, it's important because you don't want to burn that resin. You don't want to have a charred yellow stroke look on that foam and uh, it, it takes a little bit of practice because if you do it too much the casting craft's going to dissolve into it and you're going to lose that pigment if you don't do it enough you're not really going to get that movement casting craft is something that i like to use only because it continues to move out a little bit and it will always when you apply the heat spread out a little bit and then it'll contract and that's where you get some of those nice cells or that nice wispiness uh, but have some fun um, I, I was really happy with this first layer. We're just about there. I think the thing for me was just um, it looked quite dark still underneath it. So in my head for the next layer, I'm starting to think, how can I firstly start to lighten it up? And then secondly, have that wave that's coming onto the beach look more like it's crashing on there. Now, I wish I'd kept this amount of beach, but over the few layers, it's it slowly erodes, but it's okay. It ended up being a great piece, one that I'm really proud of, one that I think has the magic of the ocean, and it does look like a slice of the ocean for me. You'll see me come in now, just heating it up again and just tweaking the areas that I m maybe don't like. Uh, I've given it a chance to wait and see where it is, and I'll come with a torch where I can focus on any areas where there may be dust particles there or bubbles that I need to pop or fine tune any of the wave areas that I'm unhappy with that I either want to blend out or I want to create a different effect with it. But we're coming on to resin layer two now. So a lot of the process of the, is the same. Make sure your board is level again because I know you would have pulled it up and been looking at it. But if you want to control those waves, you really do have to make sure it's level. I'm going to start in the corner again with some clear resin because uh, I want to try and protect some of those shells and that starfish. But you will see me add a little bit of the 
blue coming through into that area i decided my um ocean was going to come slightly further forward now you might be thinking sharon what is that um thing that's surrounding your box well it's the edge of a, a almost like a small greenhouse that i put over the area that i work with to try and limit dust but dust is any nemesis of a resin artist you can try and do things like squirt water in the air before you start your work um, have a dust attractor put this greenhouse over you and it will minimize it but the minute you start blowing anything around you're always going to free up whether it be loose hair off yourself dust off the clothes that you're wearing or around your areas so you do have to dust regularly as a resin artist now i need to strip my room down and give it all another dust it's been a while <laughs> Anyway, so we are going to be repeating roughly what we did before, applying the darker tones to start with, coming lighter, because that will um, mean we only have to use two cups, one for the blues and one for the white. I'm sticking with adding the darker colours where below the white foam area. Now, some of this does disappear, but what you're hoping for, the same with if you're going to be doing acrylics or oils, you just want a tiny little hint of some of that dark area to come through because that'll be enough for your mind to be tricked that that's where the waves roll in and that's where there's maybe more water or there might be depth there. And I start to gradiate my colours still. I keep always pulling that line through and down so that we're going to get those nice tones now you might be screaming at the screen or this might be the part that makes you nervous because you're like Sharon well what was the point of doing that white foam if you're just going to cover it over well that is an actual great question to ask you just have to have a leap of faith and also do what makes you happy now for me I know the pigments I'm working with are quite transparent so even though it's going to cover these waves you're still going to see them through it gives you a focus point for where you're going to put that white again uh, in the same area or tweak it if you want to edit it out. But it also creates a sense of movement underneath that wave where that water's gathering speed and momentum to start curling over and create that wave. So every time you do a layer like this, it does add value and it can still come through if you're using those transparent colours. I hope I've articulated myself all right there. I think I am. On this video, because it is a step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to try my hardest to talk out loud. I don't think I'm going to put any of Sharon's Dodgy FM on because I really want to talk through the layers, but maybe on the next videos. Anyway, you've got to watch my back catalogue to know what I mean by that. So slowly gradiating my colours, the lighter blues, and you can see I've covered up um, that bottom corner and I'm just blending them in. You're going to start to see me come through to the whiter area again or lighter area. Uh, and just rinse and repeat. I think I do add more of the, um, um, oh gosh, what colour is it now? <laughs> it's not the blue green, it's not the green blue, it's the turquoise, I got there. <laughs> and I, in, in certain areas, I started to make the pigments thicker to try and brighten it up. And you can start to see that that uh, sand colour is starting to disappear underneath and you're starting to get that sense of it being lighter well i am anyway and uh, you could keep your ocean just one color you can break it up have a little bit of fun you can see now i'm adding some of that turquoise to the clear area and letting it bleed in together but yeah i might just have a little look take a breath and uh, we'll go on with the next stage so what i am being very mindful of at the moment other than the composition and where the colors go in and safety and everything like that um the resin is self-leveling and i'm wanting it to start to cure so that when i do apply the white at this stage because the second layer counts more than the first i'm going to have more control on it and uh, there is a balance by not doing it too much not what am I saying not waiting while it's too cured but you want it so that your resin's level because I've worked on a couple of pieces recently where if that board is slightly off your waves will just go into this whole different direction and then you're going to have to work hard to try and get your composition back or just have a very rough water now you are seeing me just squiggle my little um, stick there just trying to make sure any gaps in the resin 
that it's going to make contact again because that's going to force it to self-level and it's going to uh, fill in those gaps and I'm trying to assess because I only just make enough resin really for this piece there's not a lot left because it's quite a big board and it's 300 mils so every drop of resin counts I did always well not when I did Whenever I'm starting my layout, the first thing I always do is take out some reserved clear resin that I'm going to be using for white. If you're unsure if you've got enough, maybe have a go above what you think you need because then you can always add it to your pigment colours later, but you can't take your colour out of it if you want to make it white. Um, I wasn't too sure about the deeper blue that I'd put at the front here. I think I was trying to replicate the fact that there might be some shadows over this uh, particular wave that's rolling into the beach. Um, it worked okay in the end. I mean, hindsight could have mean that if, if I'd have not put that there, I could have maybe just had the more white foam coming onto the beach and, and protect that beach area. But that's not the journey this piece wanted to go on. It wanted to erode some of that beach. It wanted to... Uh, be more about that slice of the ocean with just a little peep into the window of what's going under the sea uh, to quote Ariel from Disney <laughs> okay so I think I am going to put a little bit of dodgy FM on because you might be fed up with my voice now I know this is for beginners I know this is to talk through my process and hopefully encourage you to give resin art a go or an ocean a go um, once you understand some of the principles of it only takes you a couple of times and you can get it down pat and you can understand how you work or create different illusions with that uh, trickery of the brain with shadows and darker colours and, and those suggestions that you have. But I will come back on to the next layer. I hope that this process that you're going to see between now and then is fairly self-explanatory. I'll add my white again, which has got the casting craft in. I'm going to apply it quite... Um, specifically and purposefully uh, so a little bit more control because I want to make sure it stays just roughly in the area it was I didn't want it just going off on its own little merry journey and telling me what it wanted it to be and I am trying to blend through some of those colors so that it's more or less clear that's on top of the white with just a hint of that color coming through but I'll be back very soon I hope you're enjoying this so far I hope if you are new to my channel, this is going to encourage you to go and check out more of my work. And if you are somebody that's just popped back, thank you for coming back and seeing me. I hope you still enjoy seeing some of my ocean pieces come to life. But thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. And thank you for your time. Well, surprise, I'm back quicker than I thought. No music. I'm working on my new MacBook Pro, which I got for Christmas, which I love. I've got no uh, audio library on here, so uh, something I've got to fix up. <laughs> anyway, I am placing another starfish down there. Now, please don't worry, my fingers are not touching the resin in any way, shape or form. I'm just placing them. I didn't want to get my pots or the other little uh, shells sticky. And I will come and add a tiny little bit of clear over the top of them just to make sure it adheres. I was doing my blending through with my stick and I'm going to put my heat gun on and if you look I'm going to constantly move it and I'm just trying to heat up that resin to help it self level but also to um, warm it up ready for when I add that casting craft and it's also helping us pop those bubbles now if you are not aware in the top right hand as you're looking at the screen there should be a little icon there that will give you a link to other suggested videos of mine that you might enjoy watching and also at the end of the um, this video, there is going to be uh, a couple of recommendations as well. Um, yeah, so I am going to be very straight now with my white. This is where you see the white start to take over some of that beached area, a little bit more than what I would have liked. However, I enjoy the end result and that's what it wanted to be. So we worked with the resin guards. With casting craft, it's really important that you don't add too much, but it's also important that you add just enough. It's like the three bears, isn't it, with a with a porridge where they want one that's just right. Anyway, I went off there, didn't I? So what I'm what do I mean by that? If you don't add enough of the pigment with the casting craft, it could disappear and be quite transparent, and you won't get that beautiful white foam look now it will absorb some of the colors into the casting craft which i think is a beautiful as 
empathetic side of it because that again adds to that sense of that churning ocean because no white foam on the top of an ocean is a solid white color uh, if you put too much in because it is oil based you will get a slick of oil across your image and 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 that's not pretty either and it can overtake dramatically so you want just the right amount so i would say work on small pieces if you've not used this before and, and practice just get a tile put some blue on there put a little bit of casting craft and um try it with different amounts of i usually give it just one good squirt and that's enough when i apply the first lot i can see if it goes quite transparent i know that i need to add just a little bit more and i work backwards and forwards a little bit until I'm happy with the heat gun just one quick movement over and then back and forth again until I get a look that I like um, and again there's no right or wrong no wave is the same do whatever speaks to you and remember the casting craft will um, look quite big but then it will contract back back on itself and, but the idea is you don't want to blow it too much so that it disappears into the pigment. You don't want to overheat it so you burn your resin. And please remember, this is where you absolutely should be wearing your respirator the minute you're applying heat to it. And when I applied the casting craft on this or at the end of this piece, um, they were too perfect. And what I mean by that is not an A plus, they're the best waves ever shine, but they were too flat and I like my waves on my ocean to have movement in there and character in there and um, it just bugged me and I'm a real big believer between each layer propping it up keep walking past it see the parts that I really enjoy see if there's any big bits that irritate me and then come back and work on it so but I, I really like the control I had with the casting craft I really like that when I placed it it stayed where I wanted it to be and that shows that my board was level that I'd waited for the resin to self level and that it was coming to the point where it was getting quite sticky now again I'm applying a little bit of control with the white that I'm putting in this area I want it to look like there's that sense of movement in there so a tiny little bit goes a long way and I tend to put it a little bit around where the shells are or where the uh, starfish are is and that's just a preference of mine I think it draws your eye to these amazing little features that you've got in that display and when you look at it it really adds to the fact that you are peering into that slice of ocean i've used smaller starfishes than i normally use but um it's it's working for this piece and i tend to put my starfishes upside down to what they are because i really like the details under the feet and everything like that anyway i'm applying clear resin now just over the top of where the shells are and the starfish are just to help make sure that it's going to adhere to it um properly and i'm going to add um I, I don't think i had any more shells a little bit of gems on there but i really do enjoy how this piece is coming together but the next day i think i i think it could have stayed like this if those back two waves had not bugged me but they did bug me and so the idea was how can i create that sense of movement and the next layer is more or less one color all the way through i went for the um, you see me on it now on layer three uh, and hopefully you can see what I mean that those back two waves stayed exactly the same they're quite flat I, I don't like it it's not aesthetically pleasing to me so I'm going to protect that front area so I'm putting clear on there because I want to make sure that when I add a second layer on top of it you still see that one coming out to add depth I'm protecting a little bit of the wave here because the clear resin and the white foam add that nice gray kind of different tones of white but at the same time i'm thinking where do i want to add a little bit more oomph in each wave and you'll start to see i'll come and add casting craft again across where these wave areas are but what i'm also mindful of now you see me taking the tape off the reason i'm taking the tape off is i know that i'm getting to my maximum level of um the amount of resin this board will take and if it domes around where this masking tape is i'm a bit worried that i won't be able to peel it off so i am removing it 
uh, so it doesn't cause me an issue. And then if I do drip anything on this white area, I can tape tape over it. It's because I know I'm going to be using mainly clear or it's the turquoise. And I add a little bit of white in it to make it a little bit brighter because I really wanted to lift that back area to a brighter. I really wanted the whole thing just to lighten up. So it's purely going to be clear, casting craft white and the turquoise with a tiny little bit of casting craft in there to lighten it up. I've removed the tape to make sure my resin is not going to adhere to it. And if I do make any drips, which I'm a messy worker, I'll just paint over it. Now the white around the edges um, was painted and it does have a tiny little bit of glitter on the edge, which I put on myself. You don't have to do that. It's an optional extra. Uh, I just find that it, if the light catches it, it just carries on the sparkle that's coming out of that ocean that you can't see yet um, to the board. So I am adding at the minute the... Um, the pigment very very transparent i wanted it to go in that area where the beach is but i didn't want to obscure the view of it and then i'll add a little bit more pigment in there and i will add a little bit of the casting craft and it should look slightly milkier but slightly brighter and uh, the turquoise is one of my favorite colors for the oceans but i'm sure you could let me know in the comments what is your favorite tone to use for an ocean that makes it come to life or makes it speak to you i would love to know um i'm trying to think what is going to be in this last layer other than i apply it i let it level out and then i hold a breath as i think about the placement of the peak of the waves i didn't want them to be uniformed I wanted them to have their character. I wanted the front wave to still be the hero, but I wanted to, the back one to look like that's what the force was and that's what was pushing the ocean into the beach. So I'm going to take another breath now and have another drink and think about what else uh, I can talk to you about. Well, maybe a little bit about me. Uh, we have a fur baby um, that's new, Thor. I think you saw him at the front of the video. He is making me work for it the past couple of days, trying to potty train him, or should I say, do you call it potty training when it's puppies? Taking them outside. Uh, and he is becoming a beautiful uh, companion for Zeus, who's our other fur baby. And we have a Greek theme, because we always have uh, Hades and Ares, who are cats as well. And the um, Ares, I think, walked over this painting when it was set. So there was no harm to the resin, no harm to <laughs> to to hades but walked across it so i now have to put a clear coat over the top of it to remove his tiny little uh, prints that are in there ah oh, the joys of fur babies
hope you're feeling incredibly relaxed after listening to that little bit of music. Yes, I worked out how to get it onto my new Mac and add it into this without breaking my music. Anyway, I the process has always been the same. For each layer, make sure you have your board level. Now, I poured all my resin on here, left it for a little bit, heated, heated it up, and that's just to encourage it to get leveled quicker because when you apply your white, you want to apply it towards the end where you're going to have a little bit more control on it. Now, I end up putting one more layer on this, which is probably one more layer than it should have had or could have, in my opinion. The reason being, I because I wanted to control the white, I probably put a bit too much control on those back two waves and you'll see they don't really look any different to what they were before and they end up being quite flat and I just didn't enjoy it. There's aspects of it that I liked but it just it was just too like parallel <laughs> and no wave necessarily is like that they're all going to be slightly different so when this part is all done the next day I come in and then I add just clear um, resin all through it all and just add a little bit of white in the area to suggest that maybe there's a little bit more height in different areas and a little bit movement and um, I did it so that it was aesthetically pleasing to me now as I've said before at any stage you can do just uh, one layer two layer three layers whatever you want just remember with it, each layer you add is putting more weight on there and also it's making the piece more expensive so if, if you are thinking of selling you just need to take that into consideration. Having said that, sometimes you have to be willing to go on a journey to work out different ways, different processes, what works, what doesn't work, so that when you are working on future pieces, you can take that into consideration. But the joys of resin work is sometimes the resin gods have different ideas and you have to work with it. Uh, sometimes you seem to have that control uh, and sometimes you get happy little accidents in the words of Bob Ross along the way. All you see me do whenever I'm heating it up is you're seeing it in real time movement. It's on 360 degrees and I move it backwards and forwards and I try to ensure that the heat gun doesn't touch the resin and it's constantly moving. Therefore, you're not going to scald that resin. But there's nothing really else for me to talk to you on this piece, even though it's a step by step tutorial because I did all the talking in the first two levels. A lot of it is replicated throughout it. And uh, I, I hope that you enjoy this. It, give me a thumbs up um, if you've not already and you think my video added value. Subscribe. And I do like to interact with you, so comments are always welcome. Let me know if you find this tutorial uh, helpful and if you'd like to see more tutorials. And other than that, I'll put a little bit more of Sharon's Dodgy FM on. You'll see me come towards the end and showcase the depth and the beauty in this and that sparkle that comes out. And I really do think it is a slice of the ocean. You let me know what you think. But I will see you on the next video. Well, put my teeth in video. And if it's going to be a talk over, I will do a tutorial. And I'll try and mix in a little bit of that Sharon's Dodgy FM. Anyway, bye bye. Speak soon.
going to see if I can get you to see more of the detail out here in some of these natural lights. Look at those little bits. It's like you get a glimpse into a slice of the ocean and some of the depth in these waves churning and that misty feeling, those little patterns of that wave just there, that sense of movement and that darker shade underneath really does add value. So we're coming into the second one now. And then the last one, which is the bigger one that's just coming and crashing, look at that. It's just like you've captured a moment of the ocean and I can hear that water lapping. And then here it's a little bit calmer, but we have more depth there. So again, a little bit of that glitter, see if I can get it. I just love how milky that is. And I'm really glad that I did the depth uh, and those darker colors coming through to the lighter colors. But anyway, that's a little bit of a close up. I hope you enjoy and I just love the ocean.